This episode of the Nerf Herder Council is brought to you by Audible. Visit audibletrial.com forward slash NHC for your 30-day trial and a free audiobook download. Hi, this is Joseph Williams, son of John Williams, and you are watching the Nerf Herder Council. Why, you stuck-up, half-witted, scruffy-looking Nerf Herder! You can't use that word! Only we can use that word! You're tuned in to the Nerf Herder Council, your source for Star Wars opinion, conversation, and debate. Featuring your hosts, JT. Stormtrooper armor deflects everything except Orbach hooves. <laughs> they kind of they're like a horse version of Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> AJ. Yeah, Rebels Rebels is a lot like our show where we think we have a good idea and then it just fails in execution. <laughs> On this episode of the Nerf Herder Council, we're getting gory and graphic with Art the Clown as we give our review of Terrifier 3, as well as some thoughts on the other three films in the franchise. This is the Nerf Herder Council. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Nerf Herder Council. I am your. Oh, got some kickback there. All right, let's try this again. There we go. My bad. Blew the intro. All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Nerf Herder Council. I am your host, JT. We are live, apparently in both of my ears, uh, on Facebook, YouTube, the uh, YouTube channel of the Virtual Cantina Network, as well as their Facebook page. You can find us at those locations every other Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, we are brought to you by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash NHC for your 30-day trial and a free audiobook download. If you'd like to get some awesome, customizable Nerf Herder Council swag, just go to shop.nerfherdercouncil.com. And if you would like to get some Virtual Cantina Network swag, just go to tpublic.com forward slash user forward slash virtual dash cantina. So without further ado, uh, hopefully he doesn't botch his intro the way that I botched mine. Uh, bring on AJ. How's it going, man? Hey, buddy. What's going on tonight, man? How you doing? I am. I'm doing good. Uh, a little bit of technical difficulty there. I was wearing the wrong color shirt, and um, that was yeah. actually that would have been perfect. You should have stuck with that. It looked really stupid. It really looked so, stupid. You, you want to tell the audience what the heck we're talking about? Uh, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, real quick, the views of the Nerf Herder Council do not necessarily reflect those of the Virtual Cantina Network. And uh, we are talking about Terrifier 3 tonight, so there are going to be spoilers. So if you have not seen the movie and you do not want to be spoiled, then uh, definitely turn this one off. Uh, there will also be spoilers for the first and second movies as well. Also, All Hallows' Eve, which started this whole thing. Not a lot of people know that, actually. Uh, AJ hasn't seen it because he didn't know that either until I told him yesterday. Uh, but yeah, so there's going to be spoilers for all free free. of the movies. So... Um, yeah, well, I bought it. So, yeah. So, anyways, guys, there's going to be spoilers for all four of the movies in here tonight. And, um, yeah, there might be some uh, rough language. So, if you're not into that, uh, might not all, might also not be the show for you. And rough language tonight is not just going to be cursing, but there's going to be a little bit of discussion of uh, people getting chopped to little tiny bits <laughs> because these movies are violent as hell and they are gory. So uh yeah <laughs> kim mcleish says that creepy red of aj's room looks like he killed a guy over the light <laughs> <laughs> nice oh my gosh that's awesome so yeah that was uh i'm, I'm glad i caught the shirt but i had to wait for you and i, I didn't want to jump out and <laughs> you'd be like where the hell are you so i had to wait no you never have to wait for me my cat spilled a drink that's why i was late oh lucy is being a bad kitty okay Mm -hmm. All righty. All righty. So 
like I said, these movies are extremely gory, making them for me extremely awesome. So first and foremost, I believe I've stated this on our Halloween episodes before. For me, if I'm going into a horror movie, the gorier the better. I like it just messed up and people getting hacked up and you know stuff you know saw is always awesome for me because you know you know there's a room full of writers whenever they get together like and they go yeah we're gonna do another one of these movies and it's just a bunch of sickos going okay how can we carve up a human body in a different way this time and i want that job because it seems like it would be a lot of fun so i can totally see that yeah yes uh kale says so in other words what jt wishes he could do to the purgle and their creators uh I can't say they're creators, Kale, because then there'd be a whole bunch of other content that I wouldn't get. But Purgle, yes, 100%. 100%. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, right off the rip, I mean, you've seen Terrifier 1 and 2, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. But you have not seen All Hallows' Eve. Not seen All Hallows' Eve. Okay. All right. So Sorry, my Art the Clown knowledge is incomplete. Okay. Well, so All Hallows Eve is basically it's like three little short stories. They're kind of like the basis of the main story. So that like the main story is like there's this babysitter who actually is the actress who plays the news reporter in the beginning of uh, Terrifier 2. And after the kids, the two kids that she's watching come home from trick or treating, she finds a VHS tape in the in the one kid's uh, Halloween sack. And so they're like, ooh, let's watch it. And so on this tape are the three stories or whatever, you know. And it's uh, Art the Clown is kind of like the it, it's supposedly like he's like the common thread through all all three stories. But the second one is some alien invasion thing. Like aliens get into this person's house and it's like the only time Art the Clown is shown is like the, the husband is a painter. And he he painted a big picture. He like had a dream and like went into a trance and painted this horrific looking face. And it was Art the Clowns. Like so, Art's not really in it outside of being in a painting. Um, but the first one is is pretty messed up. Um, you know, there's some gore in there. And then the third one, like it's it it, it, it <laughs> it's just awesome because you know Art does his his art thing. So I can see why they decided to make a whole movie about just him. Um, and it's basically oh, the summary. Was, art does his art thing. <laughs> oh, dude. It, it's like, so, so he's like, he, this, this woman's on like, a, she's, she's traveling to an airport or something. Like she's driving like an hour or two. And so she stopped. So art, the clown was, he gets kicked out of the bathroom and the guy's like, Oh, you rub, you know, piss and shit all over the wall, whatever. So he kicks him out. Well, then later on down the road, the woman shows up and, you know, he's giving her directions and stuff and whatever things happen. And he en- she ends up not being able to find this guy after, you know, he disappears and says, I'll go inside to get something. Well, she goes to find him and she goes in the office and Art the Clown has just brutally murdered this guy and right in front of her. He's like doing a smile thing and he's got a handful of hair and just starts sawing the guy's head off. <laughs> like, oh, OK. So it's more like like a Rob Zombie's Halloween part two. Oh, it was. Yeah, it, it was, was like visceral death. Yeah. And so the okay, long, short, okay. long and short of it is like. She tries to get away and, you know, there's a car crash and then she gets in somebody else's car and, you know, Art eventually catches her and then it like shows her waking up and only shows her face like, you know, but she's alive. So you're like, okay, cool. And, you know, Art's and whatever. So as it, as it pans out, you know, she's kind of like looking like, oh, thank God I'm alive, whatever, you know, I'm not too messed up. And as it pans out, uh, Art's doing his laughing thing and, and come to find out he had cut off her arms and legs at the elbows and knees and like sewn the stumps together. So it's like all nice and tidy. <laughs> like, so it's just basically, oh God. Yeah. I was it's like horrible. Yeah. And, awesome. and so I was it's awesome. Too. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's, that's why I was like, okay, now I can see why, why they actually made that terrifier movie. And then it's gone from, from there. So um, basically watch the first one as like the historical, you know, the history of art, the clown. But also, it's got some pretty awesome deaths. And again, had I seen that movie before Terrifier came out, I'd be like, that was awesome. <laughs> so, 
That was that was pretty tight. Uh, Kale McLeish she says, "Here's my knowledge. Here's my entire knowledge of Art the Clown. He's a clown. His name is Art. He kills people. The end." Kale, that's the beauty of these movies. That's all you have to know. Like, there's a story, and I think let's we'll start talking about three right now. The story is pretty stupid, but I don't really care. And I, my wife, I think Kale just summarized it actually. Yeah, I mean, my wife even said she's like, my favorite one's the first one. Because there's not really a story. He just walks around killing people, and that's awesome. I'm like, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, so Miranda says, good to see you. She says, the practical real-life side of me doesn't mind the gore, but wish it was a little more believable. Well, how, that's that's no fun. If you want believable gore, want something nasty that I rewatch, and I make a point to watch it every Halloween because it is as dark and twisted a movie as you can find, and it's awesome for that reason. Is uh, Human Centipede Two? <laughs> that <laughs> you want realistic gore? There you go. That's that one is like whew, that one makes even makes me cringe. And so yeah, I've, I've noticed that uh, Terrifier humans are very juicy. Like it doesn't <laughs> matter where you get cut. There's just gallons coming out. Um, and soft skin. And it's, yeah, yeah, soft skin, and it's uh, it's almost like like ketchup or paint, like. Like the, the quality of blood, I think, has a big impact on the effect, right? Like, I'm thinking like saw, where the blood is almost like black at times. Yeah, it's like like syrup, like oil, like really gross. And this is just like cartoonishly like opaque, bright red, almost like Heinz ketchup red kind of See, blood. I don't mind it. Like one of the things that that this series is continually lauded for is the practical effects. And I, I tend to agree with that. Like we know no one's going to die this way, you know, but I mean, it having seen a whole bunch of horror movies, it could look a lot worse. And I think it actually looks pretty good in some parts. It's, you know, it's, it's close. It, it's, it doesn't quite fall into the, you know, category of like eighties stuff. Like when it was like, you know, the, these, these types of effects were in there. Where it's like candy stuff. apple glaze. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so, all right. So, I, I I was much more of a fan of the Terrifier series than you were. So, what were your first impressions of uh, of Terrifier? Hey, 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 don't don't be putting words in my mouth, there, buddy. I oh. never said that. I never said that. Well, I didn't say you said it. I said it. Anyway, um, so having seen, so, so I had to go back and rewatch the uh, first two. Right. Because I hadn't seen the second one. That was the weirdest thing. Okay. So just to set the stage for the audience, I saw Terrifier, had not seen Terrifier 2, and then uh, Terrifier 3 came out. So I went to see it in the theater. And I'm thinking, oh, but it's, it's a horror movie, right? Like there's a continuity doesn't really matter. You're there for the kills. <laughs> Turns out that, uh, yeah, you better see number two before number three. So that was yeah. kind of jarring, actually. Because like you said, the first one doesn't really have a story. It's just like he's a dude. And he kills some people in the basement of a building. End of story. There's like nothing yeah. else to it. So like three starts up and they're like, oh, yeah, you remember when they when we barely escaped from this guy five years ago and and all this weird, crazy shit happened. And he's like putting himself back together. And I'm like, what the hell is all this now? <laughs> like this was not yeah. established in the first one yeah. at all. But um, I like I really like this series because I think that. um it's got just enough story. It's 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 kills framed by how do we get to the kills? And I'm fine with that. Yeah. I don't need this like grand drama, this like well thought out canon, like like a Star Wars esque. I've got six episodes mapped out in my head ahead of time. Like just just give me a reason that the guy's coming back and it doesn't even need to make sense. And then just let him kill a bunch of people. That that's really all it takes. Horror yeah. movies are so simple. So yeah, I I'm I am a big fan actually. It's just a it's just a hard left turn from the first one to go to two and three. What do you think? Ah, well, I I would agree. Um, again, I I will stand by my take that I'm a bigger fan than you. Um, I I'm the one that bought All Hallows Eve, and you didn't even bother to watch it because you said it wasn't available for free. So I win. Also, I had seen Terrifier. I two. saw Terrifier oh, three first. That's okay. I didn't have the time. I was booked every single night till I went to see it. So. Um, yeah, no, I completely agree with you. Um, I, 
you know, I, I saw the articles that had come out, you know, a couple of days before that said overseas, like, oh, people, you know, people got up and left and two people puked and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, sweet, let's go. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And I, I think you describe it very aptly when you say that it's, you know, there's bits of story that get you to each kill. It's not just, you know, random butchery. I mean, it, like the first one you could kind of say was basically random butchery. So some girls like mm-hmm. they, you know, their, their car breaks down or whatever, or they, they run out of gas. Art the Clown starts ripping people apart. End of story. <laughs> you know, like They didn't really kind of introduce storyline per se I- until the second one. And that's now played into the third one. And it, it's cool. You know, I, I, th- I think it's good. I, I don't know where they can go from here because th- there's a potential of them to do something with it that's going to be ungodly cheesy. Um, but I'll wait to find out till Terrifier 4 for that. And even then, I probably still won't complain because it's going to be a bunch of gnarly ass kills. So, um, you know, I mean, it, it's one of those things like it's 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 kind of nice. Like, you know what you're going to get with this, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, like I mean, it, because with other franchises and granted, this is only well, I guess it is four movies now. But But with stuff like, you know, like, let's say Friday the 13th. Like the first one was good, second one was pretty cool, and then it started getting cheesy, and it was like shitty, and you kind of just expected them to like, eh. all right, it you know, almost like it just becomes like a guilty pleasure or one of those things where you have to see it because you saw the other ones, even Hellraiser, like the first two Hellraisers are killer, and no pun intended, and then the third one is uh, like you get one of the centibites is a dude with the CD stuck CD stuck out of his head. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Whereas these are basically, you know, Hey, it, you're just going to see art. The clown absolutely decimate people. Like anybody that comes on screen around that guy, you know, they're not going to live. Mm-hmm. Like there's just mm-hmm. no, you know, they're not getting out of it. They're completely screwed. And there's a very loose story around it that's creepy, and I like that. I, I I knew I knew going in I was going to enjoy the film because I already knew. Okay, I, I want to see Art the Clown, you know, completely decimate things, and he did, and it was nice. It was comforting. <laughs> it's comforting to see people dismembered in grotesque detail, comically oh, grotesque detail. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I mean, let's and let's get to that too, like. You know, you talk about story. I mean, they really kind of push the envelope on certain things, you know? I mean, the very first scene in, you know, in the house, they, I mean, they don't show it, but they completely imply that he just wastes a couple little kids, you know? And you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, I'm like, what the hell? And then... Later on in the movie, he, he he's Santa in a mall and sets off a bomb and nukes a bunch of kids too. You're like, oh my god! Well, look, obviously they're not going for like. I mean, this thing would never even make it to theaters if they actually showed like kids getting murdered. So you, yeah, it's implied at least. Like, look, I love my horror movies and stuff. I don't want to see like a six year old pretending to walk around with like half his face blown off or something. You know, like that's that goes beyond entertainment at that point. And you're, oh, I see that. Oh, my God. I see that look. I, I see that look, dude. You want to see that? I, I don't. But the part of me that loves horror movies that push the envelope would go, oh, my God, they really did that? Like, wow. And it wouldn't be because, oh, I, I, I want to see that. It, I don't want to see the act. So it's I, I just, to, to see something that does that, like, I mean, dude, I've watched some really messed up shit. Like you like I I look up like the most twisted horror movies and I try to watch them I, and I haven't seen a ton of them yet because a lot of them are subtitled and I don't like those but like I mean holy moly like I a Serbian film for example I've watched and that is uh, I, I mean it's it's just so wrong and why you just, am I not surprised. It, dude, because because if I'm watching a horror movie like like they don't scare me 
So if I'm going to watch something that's not fun and, you know, or, or educational or something like it, it, it has to be something extreme for me to be like, oh, geez. So, you know, <laughs> Kale, AJ, if this is the first time you realize that John might be a little messed up, I have several <laughs> questions. <laughs> well, this is the first time I've ever heard you say, like, I might want to see some kids get slaughtered on screen. So really what you want is like the extended cut of Revenge of the Sith. Like you want to see the younglings getting mowed down. I just it's it's the fact of someone actually having the balls to do it, I guess, is is what I'm trying to say. Because I'd be like, oh, dude, that's too far. But it'd be like, holy shit, this exists. Like someone did that. Good God. Like, no, no, you never want to see that. You never want to see that. And here's why. If you see that, I guarantee you in that same movie, the dog's going to get it. Oh, that's true. Yeah, we don't want that. Yeah, there are certain safe zones in horror movies. You don't you don't kill animals. You don't kill children. That's it. Yeah, no, I agree. But I mean, in this one, I mean, they he might they might as well have shown it on screen. I mean, you, you got the sound of it. Oh <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, I was like, oh my god, like well, wow. it was damn near like Looney Tunes comical, right? Like it's a big gift, and then the lid comes off, and you know, like yeah, with the bomb, yeah. the Mongo blazing yeah. saddles. No, I'm talking about the first one when he's in the house and he goes in the kid's bedroom and you just hear all the sound of it. You're like, holy shit, man. I was really surprised by that. Yeah, I I that, thought the kids would. I don't know if they would escape because, I mean, really, that's one of those things. We were talking this on, on other, other shows about um, horror movies where you don't want to live, like where the winners are the losers. Like, oh, I survived that horrible thing. Yeah. Who wants to like the hills have eyes? We're like, oh, you just watched your entire family get murdered, and then you were raped by a mutant, and you're out in the middle of the desert with no provisions. Are you really happy that you got out of that? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. It's like same thing here. Like if if these kids just watch their parents get like brutally friggin' murdered, or like say one of the kids watches their sibling get brutally murdered along with their mom and dad, you know, just take me to, just take me to. I don't. I'm done. I am, I am wrecked as a human forevermore. Yes. Yes. No, I, I guess that's a good point. I guess it's a good point. Um, yeah, I just, I just think, you know, it kind of, and Miranda had a, que- Miranda had a question up top that we'll get to. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I think them doing that and setting that up, like, you know, with the kids off the bat, I'm like, okay, this is, this is depraved. Like, this is definitely going to be something <laughs> messed up. Um, so it w- it kind of set the tone for me, which I, you know, I, I thought was, was cool. Um, did you, did you care whether or not it had anything to do with the plot? Cause those are just randos. There was like no. nothing storyline driven about that whatsoever. Yeah. No, huh? no, I, I mean, I, I actually liked how it got right into it. Mm hmm. You know, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's, and, and, and that, that's, that's pretty smart. Like, I mean, they did that with Terrifier too. You know, he's, he's in the morgue and, you know, it shows the guy like all chopped up, dragging himself across the floor, trying to get, you know, get to the phone to call 911. Um, no, I, I, that didn't bother me because, I mean, basically the whole thing is, you know, the plot synopsis was, you know, the, Sienna and Jonathan, the brother and sister from Terrifier 2. You know, it's a couple years later, and they're trying to get on with their lives, and Art comes back and wreaks havoc on Christmas. So you know, it's a Christmas thing. So he's gonna, you know, and and it shows him and all the Santa Santa get up and all that crap, and all the promo mm-hmm. shots and everything. So yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was, you know, and I I think it was kind of important because it kind of sets up to be like, okay, that we're not we're not softening the edges here. You know, you 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 came to see a Terrifier movie, and we're giving you a goddamn Terrifier movie, so. Mm-hmm. By the way, let's just let's just get this debate out the way right now. Terrifier three is a Christmas movie, like Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Thank you. It's a movie that happens at Christmas. It is not a Christmas movie, right? If you'd like a further explanation of that, go see one of our prior episodes where we discuss this mm-hmm. in detail. Um, yeah, I mean, so you had asked about the story, and Miranda had asked us how we feel about the endings of this one and also part two kind of leaning to the supernatural side of things. Uh, Let's you take that one first. uh, 
I, I, I don't, I don't really have a problem with it. I don't know how else they could do it because otherwise then art, the clown, there's no way he's going to survive. Like, you know, blowing his own head off and getting a, you know, what, why did you ban kale? He said, die hard. Did you do Christmas movies? You can't unban him. You asshole. You can't. No, I put him in timeout. I put him in timeout. You can't unban him. I put him in timeout. I did not block him. (sighs) Unbl- unban kale you know i'd really like to but i don't know how <laughs> yeah i told you you <laughs> stupid ass there was ban and then there was time out i was like okay cool that's what i want um oh, i'll you, figure this out keep talking you friggin <laughs> sorry that joke backfired damn it kale i'm sorry that was not me <laughs> um yeah, yeah like the I'm sorry, um man. yeah so the whole supernatural thing i don't know how else they could have done it and I don't know how you'd make that cool. Um, so I, I was okay with it. You know, I mean, it, it, it keeps the story going. It, it gives me an excuse for more, more stuff, um, you know, more movies and, and more kills and all that. So, yeah, I mean, it's fine. Um, I will say, though, one thing I was going to say was that the ending of three kind of sets up them going to hell. And I hate that. That I would absolutely hate. Because that just gets to be so unbelievably stupid that I'm like, all right, come on. Like, at some point, you jump the shark. So, <laughs> Chastity <laughs> says, hey, people living in the red light district don't get to ban Kale. Hey, I, I did not do that. I, I, I want Kale unbanned right now. I, yeah, I wish I could, but I can't. <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah, Chastity, I also agree with you on this. She says, the minute the dog dies, screw that movie and screw all the creators. Oh, man. Kale, I wonder if, if you're still there. I wonder if you, if you back, if you jump out and then jump back in, if it'll. It's a five-minute timeout. Apparently, once you put him in timeout, you can't take him out, but it's only five minutes. Oh, okay, Kale. There we go. John Godfrey, my buddy DQ, says, it's like being a Browns fan straight to hell. Oh, God, don't even get me started. <laughs> Yeah, do not even get started on the Browns, man. I just I have all kinds of thoughts there. Um, yeah, so what did you think about the whole supernatural thing? Um, well, they had to write something, right? Like they didn't establish anything about him um, being able to come back from the dead. So when he did in two, you're like, okay, we got to explain this somehow. So they were clearly laying the groundwork. Um, you know what? The as far as horror movie franchises go, they've done worse. Oh, at yeah. least they, they attempted something and they kept it light. They didn't try to explain too much about it. Like yeah. If they had like spelled out like, oh, here's this book and it like resurrects evil spirits or he's, you know, uh, Satan incarnate and all this sort of stuff. And, you know, let's stab the book like like it was Tom Riddle's diary or something. OK, too much, <laughs> too much. Nice. Good. Reference right. There. Like uh, like what is it? Halloween three, I think, goes that direction. Um, you know, I've never seen that one because that's the one that's all f- that's super famous for not even having Michael Myers in it. Right? Yeah, it branches off into all kinds of weird, weird stuff. So yeah, like it, it's it's a flimsy framework for sure, but it's enough to say that one, they have an idea of a story, and they're not giving you too much of it at one time. They're like, look, it's it's enough for now. Just just go watch them kill people. So I'm good with it. Yeah, I. I'm wondering where it can go, though, because, again, the whole thing where, you know, it looks like they have to go to hell to get Gabby back. I'm like, I don't know so much about that. (laughs) That's 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 a little bit of a shark jumping for me. I am not really a fan of that. Yeah, I mean, you knew it was getting that direction anyway, because they kind of did a little bit of like. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street sort of stuff when I mean right off the right off the bat in Terrifier 2 Sienna is having a dream and he's you know catching everything on fire in that like twisted children's show thing that that they're doing (laughs) that's awesome yeah and she blocks the fire with the sword and all of a sudden things in her bedroom are catching fire and the sword is real so yeah I mean it it was there it was basically everything after Terrifier 1 I feel like they, they always had at least three movies planned 
Now, I, how I four comes it. out, I don't know. But but two is so different because it has a story. I'm like, yeah, they they definitely meant to do this stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, dude, it's a cash cow at this point. I mean, I think like. I mean, like the first one was like a couple hundred grand. I want to say the second one, the budget was like six hundred thousand, and then this one was like two or two and a half, and it's already worldwide over. I think forty five or fifty. So I mean, there, there's there's no way, man. But oh, look, he's back. He's back. Kale Kale is back. Kale, I'm, I'm glad to see you. I want you to know that I didn't do that. <laughs> Look at Kale all, in all caps. Don't do that again. <laughs> that taking was not orders. me, Kale. I'm taking orders now. Jeez. Okay. Hey, man. The chat runs the show. You know the rules. You know how this goes, man. Come on now. I mean, they're more interesting than we are. So yeah. Uh oh. Chastity says disclaimer. Please take a lot of my comments with a grain of salt. I'm getting over food poisoning and dealing with a bad post epileptic epile- epileptic aura, headaches, and dizziness. Good lord. Sorry to hear that, Chastity. That sucks. I mean, you're hard- hardcore. Yeah. Tony Webster, good to see you, man. Thanks for tuning in. Says my 18-year-old son loves it. I think... <laughs> Kale, when JT says it, it's fun. When AJ does it, shit's real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Billy Judd, does Art kill the kids? Yep. He kills some kids in this one. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't even know does- what the kid count is. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't explicit, explicitly show it. Um but yeah, as we were talking about a minute ago, yeah, that does happen. So um we'll Yeah, say, you know what? You know what how killers have like signature weapons and stuff? Yeah. On one hand, like I give Art credit because he's not like Jason Voorhees has his machete. You know that. Freddy kills with his claws. Yeah. Art doesn't have that. And yet <laughs> When when he just like decides to whip out a gun and shoot someone in the face, I'm kind of like, oh. I, I thought that was kind of cool though in the first one. Like he was like tired of playing around and he just was like, blam! Like oh damn, wow, <laughs> okay. But but I, I kind of like that there's not that weapon because like they, that's another thing that I think they, they do really well and they added to the kind of added to the whole legacy of art in this one because they had had another weapon that he killed with. You know, you you see him messing around with that canister of <laughs> of uh, um, uh, liquid nitrogen, and you're like, "Oh, get the hell out of here! Are you serious uh-huh, right uh-huh. now?" Yeah, <laughs> it's like that is awesome. And then, even better, it doesn't even kill like the way you would think it would kill. Like you would think it would like they, it would, like make the you know like the limb or whatever the you know like a block of ice, and it just shatters into a million pieces, like the you know T one thousand and Terminator mm-hmm. two. Mm-hmm. But no, it basically makes like the skin like a candy coating. And so when he's killing that dude in the bar, like he freezes mm-hmm. his arms and just like smashing it. <laughs> the skin's going everywhere. And there's like the meat underneath. Like, <laughs> like you can see the bones awful. and stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was so detailed. Yes. Yeah. It was. Dude, I, I did love that. <laughs> I did love that a lot. I feel like that that was so detailed. I got to imagine that wasn't just like the writers making shit up to be like, what would be like the gruesomest thing we could show that they probably like research it. Like what happens when you freeze (laughs) a living being, right? Does the flesh actually shatter? (laughs) Look look at circle J. I had the second one playing on my projection screen during our kids, our kids friendly Halloween party last year went exactly as well as you would think. (laughs) That's fantastic. Um, yeah, no, I mean the weapon thing, like you know, he you know he's got the liquid nitrogen, um, I, you know, and we'll get to this in a minute. Um, but as bad as like the shower scene is in this one, I still think like kind of like the worst weapon is that table leg from the second one. Because he just took it, he, yes. he just ripped a leg off a table and had like a fork and a knife and a bunch of <laughs> blades and nails and shit sticking out in all different directions and would just whoop the piss out of people with it. Like that was bad. And then, dude, when he when he was absolutely just destroying that one teenager in the second one. And oh, see his friend, yeah. Yeah, and then goes downstairs and gets the the big container of salt and the big container of bleach. 
and she's all mangled and he's dumping salt and bleach in there. I was like, this is amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Jamie there. Jamie, good to see you, by the way. Um, you look great. Congratulations on your awesome diet. Um, yeah, she, she says, damn, I've never watched any. I got to go. I'm getting spoilers by being here. Yeah, it's, there will be spoilers. There, there will mm. be spoilers. And, uh, but the, I, I highly recommend them. Highly recommend them. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I think, uh, I like that, that he doesn't have a signature weapon because again, it kind of opens up anything to be a weapon. Which which kind of adds to it, you know, like like when if you see somebody alive, you know they're gonna die. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, nice seeing your face too, Jamie, and you are very welcome. Um, and so I, I like that that that's the case because you don't got to worry about oh that person's getting out of there. You're like sweet, here comes another one. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then with the with the weapons, like you don't know, like if he's walking past like a plate of cookies, like okay, how's <laughs> how's how's he gonna off somebody with a cookie? You know what I mean? Like, it, I do know one thing. However, he does it. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Th- that is the thing. Jumping from like one to three in my viewing experience and then going back to two in the middle. Every time I knew he was going to do a kill, I'm like, OK, how's he going to do it? How's he going to do it? Yeah. There there are a few times I'm like, wow, they really held back on that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there were so many other ways they could have killed that person. But yeah, right. So Kale says, so is this horror horror or is this evil clown goes on a killing spree? Because apparently they're both horror now. I'd say this is horrific, but not horror. Um, Sorry, I had to hiccup there. Um, I don't I don't really know if this is a genre term, but I'm going to coin this right now. I would call this gorer, meaning yeah. like the deaths are like cartoonishly violent. So it's not a matter of like, it's not a psychological thriller or something where it's going to like mess with your head and be all spooky. You're really just waiting to see how many gallons of blood and, and, you know, body pieces fly off of a person. Yeah. I think, I think Kale, the way, the way it's gone is, you know, in all Hallows Eve, it was like scary because it's like the whole clown thing. Um, and there was a lot more story to that one. Um, there's a lot more story to to All Hallows Eve. And you know, because of the violence in it, I think the first terrifier was basically it, I I I would kind of consider that horror because it's like, you know, it's you know, these two girls trapped in this building and you got this guy and there was a lot cre- more suspense in that one, yeah. Yeah, a lot of suspense, but they're the like waiting rough. for the blow to fall, yeah. Yeah, I mean the 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 like the main kill of that movie you're just like oh my god and i think everybody reacted to it so much that then the second one it's now become kind of like art the clowns thing like you're there to see him just again eviscerate people so it's it's almost become like a joke like kind of like i would say how like in the nightmare on elm street movies like freddie once he did the whole welcome to prime time bitch and then after that, like all the deaths had to have some funny line and some some kitschy thing like that became Freddy's thing. I think with Art the Clown now, it's OK. How violently can we murder somebody? You know, there's it's still it's, random for the most part, though. You notice that? Yeah. Like the way he hacks people apart, it's not like, oh, I thought this out and I'm going to do this because I want the body to look like this after I've cut yeah. it into pieces. It's just like. Well, I haven't cut anybody's scalp off in a while or, I yeah. don't know, bisected their arm by pulling their fingers apart first. I, whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah, there's some, there are some awesome, awesome kills in this. I just love it. It's, and some of you are just like, really? Seriously? Like, I mean, so, I mean, let's get to it. I mean, everyone says that in, in all four movies that the greatest death scene is the shower scene. And I'm like, I... I don't know. No, I mean, no, I, I think it's the most extended potentially, but you know, he does, you know, he's got a chainsaw. Um, I, I, I still think, dude, the one with the first friend in terrifier two, to me always stands out. I mean, obviously the, the, um, the blonde girl in, in the first terrifier movie, that one stands out to everybody. Cause you're just like, that's, that's it. Yeah, that's mine. Yeah, you, yep. You're like, Good God. But but see the first friend in, in Terrifier 2, again, like I mean, he just doesn't stop killing her. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> You're like, okay, she's dead, but he's he's not stopping. And then, mm-hmm. like I said, he goes downstairs and gets the salt and the bleach, and it's like rubbing that. Into, it's like, and then then the mom comes home and opens the door, and Art's sitting on the bed doing his wave thing, and the the chick's sitting next to him, and like her face is ripped off and her jaws off and she goes um and it's like she's right. still alive you're like what right. the hell you're like what is this <laughs> so i that one i think is better than the shower scene in in three but the shower scene is pretty damn good see yeah here's here's where i i give a little bit of the edge actually to to one believe it or not um okay. in in two and three the gore is is multiplied but it's also like it's all super close up it's just like a a piece of a human being that is clearly a you know fake and and it's just breaking apart and bleeding and doing all this stuff that that wide shot of of just cutting a human being in half <laughs> like <laughs> yeah from stem to stern you know yeah. like it, and it just it holds that shot like that was like oh my god like that, w- that hits to me so much more because you see it as a human being instead of like, you know, just a close up on the frame. Like if you just see like this and there's nothing behind it and all of a sudden like chainsaw goes through, you're like, okay, well, that's clearly just a bit of yeah. rubber with some, you know, shit inside of it. But when you see like an entire body and, and it just gets like, and it's like, yep. you know, shaking around because the chainsaw is hitting it and everything like it just hits different, man. Yeah. No, I agree. And I, I, that's, you know, it goes back to what I was saying earlier about, you know, the, you know, the practical effects. I I, I think they're good. And I, I, mm-hmm. I think that the, you know, the violence is amplified by the fact. See, I, I would disagree with you saying that, like, you know, and, and a lot of the kills you just see, like, he'll swing and then you'll see a close up of the body part and stuff. I, I think you see a lot more than another because other movies like, you know, if they go the stab, then I think you really like focus in on you know, just that little part and like, Oh, they got stabbed. And then a wide shot, whatever this one, I think a lot of times you just get the, you know, the, okay, they just got stabbed, you know, I mean, there's, you know, or they just got caught up or they just got this or they get, you know, and it's pretty, man, oh man, it's, it's, it's pretty messed up. So I think they, I think they might be able to up the gore in the next one. If they dial back the blood, believe it or not, because I feel like they cover up a lot of the wounds by just having like gushing blood everywhere. Whereas well, like, if you were like cut into a hand, like like we, we're giving credit to the, the liquid nitrogen scenes because when when he like smashes the dude's hand with a hammer, you see like bone in there, right? And what's the difference between that and like the chainsaw in the shower? No blood. Like when you can actually see the anatomy inside instead of just like a bunch of pulpy fleshy stuff covered in red. Like, I, I think it would hit different if they dialed okay. back the blood and showed like, Oh, I cut, I cut into this dude's hand and now like the, the orangish, like yellowish fats coming out, you know, like that kind of stuff. <laughs> right. Like, like the first, the first wound on um, Sienna's friend in terrifier two, he's got like, I think it's just a scalpel or something. It's, it's something like really small, but he just, right through right through her face and it goes like yeah forehead down through her eyeballs so her eyeballs <laughs> cut in half and it's just like it's still there but it's like puffy and and, and like not right which is perfect it was like just the, yeah the, the right amount and be like <sighs> like that was hard to watch that was yes. that was really disturbing when it's just like buckets of blood everywhere you're like okay well it's it's whatever I could, I could, I, th- I can see that making sense. Um, like, like, remember me, Saw? Um, was it part three or four where they've got the, um, where they're operating on Jigsaw's brain while he's alive? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he makes her like do brain surgery to him, and like that they got that dental drill in the back of the head, and like yeah. you see like the 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 skin come away, and like the scalp comes off, like. The lack of blood showing like the anatomy that was like so visceral. It was just like gross. Yeah. Ugh. I still remember the sound of that drill. I'm like, yeah, no, no, well, it, no. It, it's it's like in Hellraiser 2 when the doctor becomes a Cenobite and they do all that kind of like the drilling in the slate. You're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Mar- Miranda says the boyfriend of the friend in two was very painful to watch. Yeah. Try watching that scene as a dude. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's more painful True. than you think. Yeah. I mean, the, the, see, that's another thing. I, okay. Sorry. This could be really gross. We're going to get kicked off the network. I swear to God. But it is kind of funny. They've got a couple kills in this series where it's like, if it's like a dude in his junk, like they, they show like the, like the little, the little testes hanging down. <laughs> like, it's so ridiculous. It's like, I'm like, oh my God, that's hilarious. But, um, so yeah, do you, like, you feel like that shower scene was the direct response to the, the, the chainsaw scene in the first one? Like, well, you know, we showed full frontal on a woman and cut her in half. So let's do it to a dude. <laughs> no. I, well, now that you mention it, I mean, maybe. Um, I mean, they don't discriminate. I'll give them that. I, I, I just kind of think maybe they're like, okay, they're like, you know, they had a bathroom at their disposal, like, you know, because they're in college and whatnot. They've got, you know, the communal bathroom type of thing here and there, I suppose. And they're like, that'd be an awesome place for a kill because it's all brightly lit and like lightly colored. So the blood is going to be freaking everywhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So maybe that was it. You know, the, the noise of the chainsaw just (laughs) in that confined space, like, you know, that, I don't know. Uh, yeah, no, but so what I wanted to ask was, um, what did you think about the whole trying to bring some suspense into it and making it a little creepy of them, like being in the house and then like, you know, Vicky, like smashing her face into the mirror and then, you know, basically like carving her arms open with it and sitting in the bathtub like what that that to me was actually kind of cool it was interesting like especially when they showed the passage of time because art had like cobwebs on them and stuff and i was like okay well that that may i can't say it makes sense but if that's where you're going with the story i was wondering like how is this years later like what are they doing in the meantime and personally i really liked how Vicky was like more of a part of it because she is haunting looking. That that character oh, just yeah. looks so messed up. And so oh, absolutely. Ooh. Absolutely. So um, what, what did you think of those two aspects? I didn't mind it. Like it, like I said, it's it's a way to just say, like, we want to pick up the story at this point, so we had to f- find a reason to explain the passage of time. Um and again, this this is part of that whole like it's enough story to like just barely hold the movie together. Right. Um, why did they go dormant? Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> they're just like, you know, I'm tired. Um, you go open your wrist in a bathtub. I'm going to sit in this rocking chair for half a decade. We'll get back <laughs> to it later. <laughs> I just, it was like, I, I, I couldn't quite follow the, oh, look at that. <laughs> Hi, Kimmy. <laughs> Kimmy, you put an H in my name. What the hell's wrong with you? Come on, man. <laughs> if there was one person that should be on this episode, it should be Kimmy. She absolutely hey. loves Terrifier and loves this movie. She's like a, just an absolute savant for the stuff. Hey, to be, to be, to be fair, I did invite a couple people and they're not here. So, oh, okay. You're gonna spring guests on me, huh? I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna call them out by name, but you know we've got we've got some friends that really love their horror movies and are are very well educated on this. So, oh, I think I, I think made I the know. offer. Okay, all right, <laughs> Kale, <laughs> Kimmy, autocorrect. Kale says she's a cannibal. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> um. Yeah, I I just thought it was a really kind of interesting way to like kind of explain the passage of time, um, especially after it was, I, I I still <laughs> Chris Mott, what's up, buddy? He says Terrifier, you guys are some sick motherfuckers. <laughs> hey, we talk about everything, man. It's spooky season. We 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 do Halloween episodes, man. And Terrifier exactly. three is awesome. So, um, yeah, but I you know I thought it was it was cool. It was an interesting kind of okay let's hit pause on them for a couple years thing um especially after i you know that weird scene of however the hell they got art's head back on his body or whatever like i don't know if she was like eating something and puking it back i i don't know what the hell was going on like i'll have to see it again to kind of figure out what what that was because i was like what i don't know she's always been the gross one right like she was introduced kind of in the second one by, I don't know, shitting on the floor. <laughs> well, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, see, that's the thing is some of the story stuff like is Kimmy and I actually talked about this on Facebook a little bit. Like th- some of the story stuff is a little, a little confusing. And I, 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 I guess I can kind of understand like it's not supposed to make a lot of sense, but it's like, yeah, I don't know. Like it gets a little wonky, like the whole devil, pos- like or demon possession thing, like Vicky wants to you know, weaken Sienna's spirit so that, you know, the demon can take over her body. Like, I'm like, what the hell is going on? So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I really think if this wasn't as violent and gross and gory as it is, because that's what you're really there for, the story might actually kind of annoy me a little bit. Um, Yeah. Speaking of uh, just, you know, shock value in general, uh, how do you feel? I'm, I'm trying to say this in a way that even with the disclaimer, um, I still got to be careful. Uh, how do you feel about uh, Vicky pleasuring herself? <laughs> That's the part that I wanted to bring up. Oh, I, I I wasn't sure how to bring that up without yeah, you know, bringing it up. But yeah, so <laughs> I I don't know if I should even answer this. To, to um, quote Cleveland from Family Guy, oh, that's nasty. <laughs> it really is, man. <laughs> Kimmy says, because the demon wants to be hot again, like talking about the demonic possession thing. <laughs> yeah. This is what the carved up face. Um, yeah, that was. Um, I, see, I sound like such a freak. I, I thought it was awesome, again, because it was one of those, oh, my God, are they really doing that? It wasn't the whole idea itself of, oh, that's cool that someone would do that, you know, in real life. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Mock. Yep. NHC after dark, baby. Yep. This basically is. Um, but it was just the fact, like, oh, my God, did they really go there? Like, that is pretty extreme. <laughs> like, so I was like, wow. I mean, that was definitely something over the top. But mm-hmm. I mean, for these movies, it's like, and, and, but, and the, the interesting thing is now you're kind of like, okay, where are they going to go from there? Like, <laughs> well, and, and yet, okay, so let's, let's talk about where they exercise a little bit of restraint. Like in the first one, nudity was very much on the table. Like, I mean, like I said, my favorite kill. Is yeah, a completely nude woman, full frontal. I was, I was so expecting. Just, it's a, it's a horror movie trope, right? Like, there's, there's yeah. always nudity, and yet they, they've actually veered away from that for the most part. Like, in terms of like any sort of like gratuitous sex, they, they don't just like trot out a hot person, male or female, and be like, "Here's some stuff to look at before we kill them." I was actually yeah. very surprised. In the shower scene, for example, I thought for sure we were going to see something, and there was nothing to see. I it's pro- I, I I really wonder if that's it, it, if that's a byproduct of well, we're doing so much other stuff. Let's not, <laughs> you know, add insult to injury, and also have nudity. Like I wonder if that's if that's the case. Do you feel like that's one of those like bygone sort of tropes that kind of like dates a horror movie now? Because it just used to be implied, like, look, if we're if we're gonna do a horror movie, you're gonna see some some bits too. Because, well, you know, <laughs> if you, if, if you're entertained by gore, you're probably entertained by sex. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I mean, it is. It's kind of funny you mention that because I think we you do kind of get used to, you know, because so many of these movies are like, oh, look at these teenagers or something or young adults, and they're you know, there's romantic interests all the time, and you invariably. You're like, oh well, I'm, you know, I'm gonna, you know, as you phrase it, I'm gonna see some bits, <laughs> like, so, yeah. Do you, do you get the idea that these movies are, in general are all kind of made by people that are probably not aesthetically pleasing? Like, I feel like it's a, it's a bunch of really creative, ugly people that are just acting out fantasies, like, oh, you're hot, and you're getting laid. Well, now you're dead. <laughs> like, this is <laughs> one. I want to see that. Two. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, it could be. It could be, man. <clears throat> um, I, I mean, Damien Leone looks pretty normal to me. I've seen, I've seen him before. Um, I haven't looked him up. Yeah. Uh, Chris Mock says, I am entertained by sex, but not horror. 
Well, uh, don't watch these, dude. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I do I have mean, some websites to recommend for you, though. There's plenty of free things streaming out there. Good lord, <laughs> we're staying away from that. We're already get, we're we're already going to get banned <laughs> from the damn network for this episode anyway, just for describing what's in the movie. Um, yeah, um, I I I I really think you know the nudity was probably. I mean, it, but the second one didn't have it either. But I think again because of the violence, um, I think that there you, you got to kind of draw the line somewhere somehow i mean this this movie T- terrifier three is not even rated like they didn't submit it for rating because they're afraid that this is what i read online it could be a rumor so take this with a grain hmm. of salt but i know it's not rated to be in the theater it had to be rated uh no it's the, all the stuff i read said that the theaters that are carrying it which not all are actually. There are a few on, like around me that I looked up that I wanted to go to, and they don't have it, which is interesting. But um, yeah, so the, the the theaters that are showing it are treating it as an R-rated movie. But I read somewhere that they didn't really want to submit it for a rating because they were pretty certain it would get an NC-17, which completely would like tank yeah. the box office for them. So. No, you're right. It's it's not rated. I didn't realize you could show anything in the theater without submitting it through the MPAA first. People must love Art the Clown. They're like, screw yeah. the rules, man. <laughs> Zip, Z. Kimmy says, that's just horror rules. Virgins live, everyone else dies. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the next thing they'll do, Kimmy. We were talking about how the fact that they wiped out kids in this one and where they can go from here, especially with like the 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 the, the pleasuring scene um mm-hmm. maybe that's it maybe maybe then they'll, they'll start attacking virgins and stuff yeah <laughs> kale says you called it a review and you reviewed it you also put me in a timeout but i digress point is you shouldn't be banned for this one <laughs> Man, i do not know well i mean spencer did say they wanted some different content on their channel from what they have otherwise and here it is. Here it is. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the other Wednesday show on the network would not be talking about this. Yeah. I com- I can actually confirm that without even <laughs> without even, even knowing them. <laughs> Having never met them, I could confirm that. Kimmy says they should rate it. If you talk to yourself the whole time, you can't sit next to Kimmy. I, okay. Do, I have to admit that I was probably pretty bad in the theater for this one. I don't talk. But I know that there were several. Oh, or oh, exactly. Man. Yeah, like yeah. you know that kind of thing. It wasn't you know. Oh, don't go in there. Oh, you know what's mm-hmm. gonna happen. Oh, he's tearing him. He's tearing him up. Like no, but it was definitely like going. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, um, I mean overall, you know, I think this movie was pretty damn good. It was. It, you know, it's you know what's weird though. You know what's really weird is hmm. that the violence almost didn't get to me. Like I had seen it in the other movies, and then this one just kind of felt like this is a, a horrible way to phrase it, but it felt like old hat. But but, the, but I knew what I was right. I knew what I was getting, so I wasn't disappointed. Yeah. But it was like it was almost like you know you know the really horrific stuff you almost weren't surprised as much as you should have been at least at least for at least for me <laughs> because if you, you yeah, know, if, i think the shock in this one comes from not so much like oh that happened it's like oh he did it again <laughs> like, yeah like he, he nailed like the liquid nitrogen i keep coming back to that like oh he smashed his hand with liquid nitrogen oh he keeps going with the hammer <laughs> yeah <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> like the first time it happens you're like i expected to see that it was telegraphed the whole time but it's not done yet. Oh, okay. Well, now this is getting unpleasant. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's definitely. I think Miranda mentioned it up in the up in the comments. Let's see if I can find it. But you know, she had said, um, you know, something to the effect of like it's you. You just it's so hard to you know. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. So she said it's super graphic. There were points in the movies where I was cringing and feeling guilty by watching the events unfolding. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I think it's it's all paid off by not like, oh, Art killed somebody, but like, oh, they're not dead yet. 
Like this is a living person that's just having to endure this. Like yeah. that that gets un- like you were talking about Terrifier too. Same thing. Like the- Sienna's friend. Oh, good lord! I'm telling you. I'm I'm <laughs> telling you, man. That that scene of that that kill of Sienna Sienna's friend is worse than the shower scene. Everyone keeps saying that the shower scene in Terrifier three is the worst of of the series, and I'm like, dude, I don't think so. I, I really think that when Sienna's first friend is killed mm-hmm. in the Terrifier 2, that is the one that I'm just Although like, desecrating oh. a corpse is pretty brutal, too. Like, there, there are a couple of times where the person is clearly dead, and it's like the old South Park thing. Like, stop. St- I'm sorry, The Simpsons. Stop, yeah. stop. He's already dead. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's literally already dead, and Art just keeps going. It's like, oh, <laughs> right. I got a chainsaw. I've got a whatever the hell. I'm just going to keep making parts. Yep, <laughs> I just, it's, it adds that's character building in, mm-hmm. the, in this in this universe. <laughs> so, um, so Miranda has a question. She says, "Do you think the actor for art is very expressive, or do they edit the extreme facial expressions later?" Um, no, that's that's definitely him because the, I don't think there's any way they have have um have the budget to CG that kind of thing. So. I was Billy wondering that, like, it's almost got to be makeup or something, though, because the dude almost never closes his mouth. Like, I feel like there's like fake teeth over his face. I don't know for sure, but no, Kimmy says, nope, that's him. See, Kim- Kimmy's my resident terrifier expert, so I'm glad that she's here. Billy Judd says Terrifier 4 better give Art his backstory and how he turned into a clown. I don't need, I you know, I don't think we need to see that. I, I I think at this point Billy he's just so damn twisted that it doesn't really matter. And I don't think any childhood backstory can explain all of this. <laughs> well, you know, I went I went through the typical I was abused by my parents thing and and damn it, don't you know I smash people with I grew up to smash people with table legs with forks and blades and, <laughs> and razors and nails sticking out of it. <laughs> yep. Yep, there's Kimmy. She said he's just a demon doing demon things. Yeah, exactly. Like it and I honestly I mean that's that's why, you know, like we talked about earlier, the story, it's cool that there is a story that it tries to adhere to. But I mean, is it really necessary? I mean, the first it's, one didn't really have a enough. story. It's just enough. This movie's like a. It's like a. It's this movie's like a crab cake. Like it's it's you know if you if you do a crab cake the right way like you know we've had crab cakes here multiple places and we've had a crab cake eating at a restaurant on on the bay in Baltimore and that is a crab cake. A crab cake mm-hmm. is just a shitload of crab barely held together. By a little bit of stuff. We've said this over and over again. And it's like, okay, that's where crab cakes are from, Maryland. So that's what it should be. And I feel like this movie is a crab cake. You know, it's all it's just gore and 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 destruction and blood and shit flying everywhere, just held together by a little bit of story. So I think that's like (laughs) Steve O, good to see you, man. He says, I just think you're hungry, John. I what am I not hungry? I'm fat. What do you want? <laughs> but crab cakes are delicious. See, I had a nice lengthy pre-show discussion with Steve O about this movie last night, actually. So yeah, he he's among the uh the people that says there's just enough story without overdoing it to make it too story focused. I think that's that's really the brilliance of it, is like, yeah, you, you got enough plot points that says, okay we have a reason for like one event connecting to the next. But if you, if you tell too much story, then your brain's engaged and you're like, okay, does this make sense? Do I agree with this story? Like, do I like it as, as a something to follow? And That's you don't want to really think about point. that stuff. You just want to think of like, when's art showing up next so we can watch more people die. That's a very good point. I think that's an excellent way to describe it really, because that's true. I mean, if if you start getting into the story stuff, like one of the things that Steph said was that she thought, that it was too much story before the killing started in this one. Like obviously they had the opening scene, but she said after that, Mm -hmm. she thought there was too much story stuff before um, they started getting into like what you're there to see. So 
I think that's a I think that's a perfect description because yeah, it's in, in these types of movies. There's there's no good way to explain how this guy gets shot and stabbed and cut and decapitated and all this other stuff, and he's still around alive. Like if you're trying too hard to explain that, you, that's when you start rolling your eyes, and mm-hmm. it takes away from like you said, like you know what you're what you're there to see. You're just there to see art, just doing art things <laughs> like and um. Yeah, that's that's an excellent way to phrase it. And that's the hard I, I, thing about all these. Go ahead. Sorry, I cut you off. No, I was going to say it was one last thing. I was I was just going to say, like, that's why I'm nervous about what they could potentially do in part four, because if you like I said, going to hell, then it's like, OK, number one. That crosses the line into being too cheesy. And then. Number two, where do you go from there? It's it's kind of like the reason why I'm nervous about like the third Tron movie that's coming out because I absolutely love Tron like love Tron, mm-hmm. but most of the allure of Tron is you know the grid. It's you know it's this awesome you know digital world. Well, now this one supposedly is set in the real world. Like they get out and so I'm like, well, god damn it, like. How, so I'm really nervous about it. I'm, Matrix I, two to make sure, Matrix three problem. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm just really like no, I completely disagree with that. I, I th- there's a whole episode right there. I, Matrix two and three are absolutely kick ass. Um, no, we we never actually talked Matrix, have we? Okay, anyway, sorry. Um, I think we talked one of them, but um, in any case, yeah, I I just you know I, it makes me nervous for the third Tron movie because I'm like, well, that's kind of taking away the whole cool factor of it. And if you with with the terrifier movies, if you start getting too story driven, that kind of takes away the point. And so, you know, all right. So Kimmy says he's from the ninth circle of hell. But I get that, Kimmy. But if you're if you start showing him in hell, then it's like, where where do you go from there? Like, what's going to happen in terrifier five? You know, then it gets really stupid. It's it's kind of it's kind of like the whole Freddy Krueger thing, where they couldn't figure out how to bring him back to life after three, so they just had a dog piss fire for no goddamn good reason. Like, mm-hmm. what the fuck is that? It's I mean, yeah. th- there's a point at which you just run out of story ideas. There's only so far things can go. But no one is anyone ever actually rooting for the killer to die. Like, and that's the problem is like, you know, you get senseless killing, senseless killing, then you get ah, some like ah. the character, and then it becomes like you're talking about the problem of when like the hunter becomes the hunted. Like, once they become vulnerable and you find out like what their weakness is, you're like, I don't want to watch Art the Clown lose. I want to watch Art the Clown murder some people. So, it as soon as he becomes vulnerable, we're not interested. That's not what we're there to see. I, um, I do know a horror movie where you are rooting for the bad guy to lose uh, and, and to die. And in this case, it's so that they don't make any more goddamn movies. Uh, it's that horrific remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street. Not they true. they could have just killed that damn Freddy and been like, okay, not even have the chance to make other movies because that thing was such a giant piece of shit. Oh, yeah. Um. So- so Miranda says uh, she hasn't been able to connect Sienna's dad and art together. Any ideas on that? Seems like there's a connection. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I have, I have thoughts here. What about you? Uh, they they kind of tried to explain it. And I, again, I was probably just too focused on waiting for the next person to get smashed in the head with a table leg with blades <laughs> and forks coming out of it. Um, to where I was like, what the, yeah, okay, so he draws her as a superhero, but the whole supernatural, I mean, that's more of that supernatural thing, I think, I, I mean, beats me. It's, it's a lot of channeling, right? Like, yeah, he drew this character when Sienna was a child, and it turns out, like, the sword actually is, I think, going to be the weapon that can take art down, that kind of thing. Um. So it's either one hell of a coincidence or there's some sort of like not biblical, but that kind of storytelling where like this guy was fated to create the things that will destroy art, like the good versus evil thing. Yeah, I don't want to see that, though. I really hope that's not Terrifier 4. 
<laughs> but to Mar- Miranda's point, though, like, yeah, they haven't really adequately adequately explained what the hell is going on that Sienna's dad was the one who, you know, created this character and, you know, gave her the sword and all these other things. I mean, I, I guess I guess that could be the, the route the story takes is kind of fleshing that out a little more. Um. I, I mean, it, it, I mean, it's, I mean, Stevo, Stevo's bringing, Stevo's bringing up a point here about that. And, you know, he says I joined late, but did recover the theory of Pale Girl and Victoria being gone, meaning art will not be supernatural anymore. We did not. I never thought of that. Maybe, yeah, maybe they're his tie to that realm to, you know, keep preserving his life. Huh. See, I never really tied his supernatural. Is that a word? Supernaturality? <laughs> it is now. <laughs> Su- supernaturalness. <laughs> Supernaturality. Um, uh, I never really tied that to the pale girl or Victoria. They, they almost just seem like straight sidekicks to me. And maybe that's oversimplifying things. But that's how it always kind of seemed to me. And again, I don't dig into the storyline of this stuff nearly enough because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'm, ju- I'm just too busy. Like, holy crap, that woman was just doing things to herself with with <laughs> broken glass while art was killing somebody like, you know, <laughs> like I'm, I don't need to think beyond that. Besides going, holy shit, someone put that on camera. <laughs> right. I think Kimmy I might be onto something here. Well, okay, so she's Kimmy says, I feel like her brother's gonna get possessed by art. He was obsessed with him in two, even wanted to be him. But I thought we I thought Jonathan is dead. Because they said that the head on the on the mantle that you know, was getting all chewed up by the rats, it was you know skinless basically. That was that that was the brother. See, this is where I, I wish uh three was on streaming because it demands a rewatch now that I have more of a sense of like who's who and, and what's right. going on. But uh I mean, it wouldn't be unprecedented. We're talking like a Corey Feldman Friday the 13th kind of uh, situation here. Kimmy says, you really think that's his head? I don't buy it. Well, I mean, I thought it was kind of a chintzy way to get rid of Jonathan, too. But who else is, would, it, would it be at, the, at this point? Or, or is it just a head? And, there's, and they just like said, oh, this is Jonathan because we put his glasses on him. I, that's hmm. that's what I you know. Art doesn't seem like the type to do a fake out. Yeah. Well, and Vicky and Vicky at that point was, you know, I mean, we we, we saw the 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 fake phone call with Jonathan's voice, so we we saw that. So th- I mean, that happened again. Yeah, that that was one of those like out of nowhere sort of abilities. We're like, yeah. oh, okay, so they can they can T one thousand this shit. <laughs> they're they're Frank, the Frank Caliendo of the demonic world. <laughs> right. <laughs> Chastity Crawley says, now say supernaturality to the tune of supercalifragilistic XBL. <laughs> no, I ain't doing that. No way. I stutter and stammer enough on this damn show. <laughs> I don't need to I don't need to forcibly do that to myself. <laughs> um, Steve O says, I kind of felt like the pale girl and Victoria were like Green Lantern's lantern for art. That's interesting. I all right. I mean, I hope you're wrong, Steve-O, because that means that in the next one, art is going to be uh, depowered or unpowered. And I don't think we want to see like a a more vulnerable or less powerful art, right? Like we want to see this dude just completely murdering the shit out of people. I yeah. don't want people to fight back and have him be like, oh, that really hurts, guys. Damn, stop. <laughs> now I actually am eyeless. Right. Oh, no. It's like, what? No, I, I like my Terrifier 2 art where, you know, you can poke him in his eye socket and he's like, ha, ah, isn't that funny? Right. <laughs> Kimmy, I think you need to check your autocorrect on this. She says, I think he took Jonathan's friend's head after he cut him anus up. <laughs> well, no. Look, we saw Anus down in the first movie, so this might not be an autocorrect. That's true. That is true. Yeah, I, I don't know. Oh, 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 I see what she's saying. 
She meant in the shower. Okay. Mm-hmm. I see mm-hmm. what you're saying. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> she says no autocorrect needed. <laughs> um, on this show, we say butthole, Kimmy. <laughs> we don't need no medical terms here. This is <laughs> um, Chastity says the sword being the weapon makes me think of how Superman is from Krypton, but is allergic to Kryptonium. Interesting. Okay. All right. Yeah, I just, <laughs> I it's going to be interesting to see where it goes because I feel like. I I feel like we're probably missing a lot of stuff that could like be interesting to do. Like, for example, like where's Jonathan is something like, is he obsessed and all that kind of stuff? Um, you know, so that's, I don't know. Like I say, I just, I just don't want it to go the hell route. <laughs> Joseph friend what's up man? It says AJ would make a great art the clown in costume. JT couldn't stay quiet that long. Yeah. And also I'm not gonna I'm a little- lie, I was I was thinking about it. Uh Miranda and I have to do a couple or don't have to, but we were thinking couples costume ideas. But I thought Ooh. it was like too direct to be like, Yeah, we'll just be Victoria and Art the Clown. Duh. I got it. You and I will go in, in costume. We'll wear the same costume and We'll do the art the clown thing. You'll be art the clown, and I'll be eight the clown. <laughs> that would be perfect. Co- I was thought of- we should go. We should go with Cenobites, actually. I think, and and you could be uh, teeth or chatters <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Right. I totally could. So Kimmy thinks it's totally going the hell route. I I do too, and I, I don't like that. Um, I don't want that at all. I don't no. want Jason goes to hell. I don't want the final well, act of Spawn ninety seven. Uh, Spawn ninety seven was so goofy that it was awesome. Um, Steve O, this I was actually thinking of this movie earlier, Steve. Before you before you jumped on, he said I'd take hell over space. Looking at you, Jason X. Yeah, that movie is oh, oh that movie is so bad. Oh my lord, so bad. Yeah, I, I, I just, I, I don't like the hell thing. I mean, if, if they're gonna bring hell into it, then have like the, you know, the portal to hell close, and like may, maybe it be like, how are we gonna get Gabby back? Like that. Okay, if if you're gonna use hell as something in the storyline, okay, fine, but don't make it. Okay, we're we're filming in hell. You know that kind of that kind of shit works for like the uh excuse uh, the freddy movies you know nightmare on elm street because okay it's in dreams you can dream anything everything but this mm-hmm. is too i i don't think it works anywhere else so if you're like oh hey check us out we're in hell like god damn it really like man this sucks yeah yeah i mean the thing that makes it scary is that like this takes place in our world like oh my god this could really happen as soon as you're fighting on another plane of existence you've lost all threat yeah yeah, By the I, way, I mean, I, I just realized, I don't know why I just noticed this tonight or right now, but um, your wallpaper, it just looks like art is just really trying to get his camera time around you. Yeah, <laughs> I did that on purpose. Like that you're so was large it. that he's just got to be like, I'm over here, guys. <laughs> he's coming up behind the fat guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, all right. So, Terrifier three or the Terrifier movies in general. Uh, final thoughts. Um, final thoughts. Um, they're good on one, two, and three. I hope they don't shit the bet on four. They're clearly going to make a four, and like you said, the story is pushing it in directions that we probably don't want to see. So I, I just, mm, we got to see the way how the story goes. But I'm really concerned with how the story's going. How about you? Yeah, I'm um I, I I don't think I can say it any better than that. I I would add that um overall I will say that even if the fourth one the story is going to suck, I, I I don't really care. I'm not I'm not there for the story. Um and I I think, you know, since you know the whole crux of this was supposed to be a review of 3, um I thought it was great. I got exactly what i thought i was going to get um i got some stuff i did not expect 
like I say, there were a few moments I was like, oh my God, did they really just do that? Which again, for me is awesome. So I just love mm-hmm. that there was such screwy stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I thought it was awesome. You know, it was, it was gory. It was violent. It, <laughs> you know, it was, it was just, it was awesome. And, and again, I love seeing things where I go, oh my God, seriously? Like I say, I'm the one that looks up the, the, the really twisted horror films like and watches shit like a Serbian film or Martyrs or something like that. Like, you know. Yeah, I learned so, things about you tonight that I wish I didn't know. Well, I mean, dude, okay. If you really want to learn about me, go ahead and watch a Serbian film. And then, you'll yeah. Like, that is... um Drop that in the comments because I don't even know what to look for and I don't want that in my Google history. It is... uh so it I think it actually is from Serbia, I think. But um John dances around knowing snuff films. Go. Yeah. Oh, it's it, it so it it's subtitled and it's like basically No, 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 Kimmy, this one doesn't have any animal stuff. Um Kimmy says that's Kimmy's a huge animal lover like we are. So she says that's one even I haven't seen cuz animals. Yeah. No, that one does not do that. Um, I think you might be thinking of Cannibal Holocaust, an Italian cannibal film from 1980, which does show actual animal uh, murder. Um, yeah, so basically, th- you can rent it on Amazon, but it's it's an edited version. Like, it's so bad they couldn't show the actual full version. And I've looked. I've tried to find, because I'm like, if this is the edited version, holy mother of God. What? <laughs> um, but basically, it's like this guy... Uh, that is a retired uh, porn star and this company or guy whatever gets him out of retirement to do like one more major film and it turns out to be a snuff film (laughs) and it is some of the most twisted shit you can imagine like you know the couple things in Terrifier I was like wow it was like a lot of <sighs> yeah yep uh, Steve, yep there you go S- steve <laughs> steve yep he's, he says it well if you love babies serbian film may not be for you yeah yeah it's definitely in fact you know what let's do that as our next episode of the nerf herder council let's really test oh the limits God. of the network <laughs> um yeah, you're just trying to get us kicked off, aren't you? Yeah, not just off the yeah. network, but just off of YouTube in general. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kicked off, <laughs> kicked out of friendships, uh, kicked out. Of... Yeah, so we're gonna end up streaming on Truth Social. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Only Trump will let us say what we have to say. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, getting back to the point, it's just whoa. so yeah, and uh, I, I like. If my, my horror movies to be messed up and this was messed up but in, in a fun way i mean is as, as much as it's it, you know weird to say that watching people get absolutely decimated like this is fun i mean let's face it that's what we're here for so <laughs> kimmy they can't ban your pretty hair kimmy kimmy is the woman who cuts my hair does an excellent job and she refused to cut it the last time i was in because i was thinking about cutting it off and she said no so we're we're still going we're still going the growing out period is, is real and the hockey hair is in full effect as everyone can see. So, all right. Well, that should just about do it then, man. Um, that was fun. I, I, I'm kind of sad that the, the, our, our Halloween episodes are over because I, I, yeah. I look forward to these every year, man. They are so much fun to like get in here and talk about something we don't normally talk about. So, Unfortunately, though, we have a lot of friends that have a lot of podcasts that talk about horror movies all the time. So, you know, if anyone wants to hit us up on socials, we can definitely give you some recommendations. But we recommend podcasts for free. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, you got to talk to us privately. We're just we're not just going to, like, hook up our friends. Come on now. Look at that. No, just kidding. Uh, look up Fright Lab podcast. Our, our buddy discussed Metal Joe there in the uh, in the chat. That's his horror movie podcast, and uh, he does a great job with that. So check that out. Very much behind the scenes and all kinds of informative stuff, not just our, you know, like, five-inch deep 
kind of level of review. So give it a look. It's a good time. Yep. Excellent show. Excellent show. Yes. Uh, all right, guys. So that is going to do it for another episode of the Nerf Herder Council. Thanks to all you guys in the chat for tuning in. It was great to see some old friends, man. Steve-O's in here. Kimmy, great to see you. Obviously, we would be remiss if we don't mention our good, good friends, Chastity, Joseph Wren, and uh, poor Kale. Boy, oh boy, do you owe Kale. I can't believe you did that. Oh, my gosh. Uh, man, oh man, Miranda, good to see you. Billy Judd, thank you for tuning in. And uh, we'll be right back here in two weeks. Now I get to remember dates again. Um, it is going to be, let's see. I love watching you struggle with this. It's hilarious. Uh, hold on. First, I could uh, fail you. Eighth. Eight. If he <laughs> doesn't leave, huh? <laughs> it's the sixth. <laughs> so, yeah, we're, we'll be here on Wednesday, October. Uh, Jesus, God damn it. <laughs> you were so close. Man. You were so close. You had the date. Blew the intro and I blew the outro. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll be we'll be back here on Wednesday, November sixth at eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and uh, we are going to be doing something Star Wars because we have not talked Star Wars in a bit, and we would like to get back into that. So we have a couple of ideas, but uh, it'll be a Star Wars episode on the next show, and uh, again, it'll be eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday. November 6th. Uh, if you guys have any show topics or anything you'd like to send to us, you can send us a message on our Facebook page or you can email us at uh, nerfherdercouncil at gmail.com. As always, we are brought to you by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash NHC for your 30 day trial and a free audiobook download. Uh, my recommendation of the week is Alex Van Halen's biography called Brothers, which just came out yesterday. So you can get that on audiobook. It's a short listen which kind of pisses me off. I was hoping for more meat on those bones, but it's about six and a half hours. But uh, yeah, check out Audible for free to get a free book there. Anything you would like to get. Uh, if you want to get some Nerf Herder Council swag, it's all customizable and it is available at shop.nerfherdercouncil.com. And if you would like to get some virtual Cantina Network swag, just go to tpublic.com forward slash user forward slash virtual dash Cantina. And guys, as always, if you're watching on YouTube and have not done so yet, please click the like button and the subscribe button, as well as the notification bell so that you are notified every time we go live. AJ, before we jump out of here, do you have anything you'd like to tell our fine viewers? No, not a thing. Okay. Well, we'll see you guys next time. Appreciate y'all. And uh, go watch Terrifier. It's awesome. And uh, yeah, Kimmy, check out a Serbian film. is never gonna get us past that blockade. This bucket's got a few surprises left in her. Plus, me and Chewie are on it. Ain't that right, Chewie? Hell yeah, you my nerf herder. You my nerf herder.